Thanks, Mary, though, for the record, you're absolutely entitled to. Um, uh, thanks. Um, it's lovely to see everybody this evening, lots of lots of friends on the call. Um, and um, that was a really interesting presentation, um, Richard. And for the record, um, I don't mind being provoked at all. In fact, I think it's probably a good thing for the purposes of argument and debate. And um, I suppose really, in some ways, I, I want to kind of pick up on that um, on that on that bit of needle, um, if I may. Um, but before I do, I just want to say, um, uh, Louise Alman is um, is with us uh, this evening and I hope she will speak um, as well because um, when I was first elected in 2010, um, I, I'd thought a lot about why I wanted to be elected. And really, you know, when I was 18, I went to university in London because I thought all the opportunities were down south. And that was why I wanted to become a member of parliament because I wanted to be part of a group of people who were doing something um, about that and trying to make Merseyside the kind of place where people could have a career and where we would grow our population, not see it permanently shrink. And Louise had been working on that for years and many of the successes in Merseyside we see today are due to Louise Alman. So um, I really hope that you'll say something. Um, and a lot of what I'm gonna say, Louise, um, I, I'm just, I copied off you really. So, so um, uh, please um, do, do tell me if I'm getting it wrong. So in response to, um, in response to Richard's um, point, you know, there's no support for federalism in England. I suppose I'd just like to um, take a few minutes to, just to make what I think of as the Scales case for federalism. Obviously being from the Wirral, I am a plastic Scouser. This will mean something to Merseyside people. I'm not a proper Scouser. Um, I'm from the Birkenhead side, therefore, you know, a, a plastic scouser. But plastic or otherwise, I do think there is a very strong Merseyside example in why um, federalism is the right approach. I think it's actually one that holds for the vast majority of England, but but I want to use Merseyside as, as a case study, um, really. Um, James Harkins is saying, yes, we have inside toilets. Yes, thank you. Lol, Merseyside joke there. Um, so... Um, England itself is 85% of the United Kingdom in, um, in population terms. And in that sense, it's a highly diverse country. So I suppose my first response to that question about whether there's support for a different way of running the United Kingdom in England, you know, I would, I would say back, who do you mean when you say the English? And what do you mean when you say England? Um, you know, I, I, I am English, uh, a point that often I have to remind um, people uh, in politics, just because perhaps in Merseyside we, we don't, um, or, you know, we, we perhaps think differently, we perhaps do things in a different way, I don't know. We're still very much um, part of England, and I think the truth is England is very diverse, so we need to uh, understand both the politic, politi polit political and as I'm going to say, economic diversity in order to build a kind of federalism that is truly worth having and I think that the public would want. So to come back to um, Merseyside, the wonder that is, um, most people on the call will know that, um, you know, it, in, the, in the 60s and onwards, um, even just before then, we had a, a, a period of serious deindustrialization, um, and, you know, our, our economy was left with both kind of productive holes in, in the sense of the, the productive capacity that had been lost and in many ways literal actual holes where bomb damage from the Second World War right across the city region of Merseyside um, had never really been fixed. So fast forward through the 70s and the 80s where Merseyside is disinvested in um, from the point of view of um, the economy and loses whole swathes of its population, um, it is left in a kind of um, state that I would describe, you know, we know that in the UK as a whole, like our economy is as diverse as the Euro European Union's economy across the piece. So we, if you compare parts of the UK economy, um, it, it, it's as diverse as the European Union and Merseyside you know, at the point at which it gets objective one funding 
um, from the European Union was in that kind of as parlous a state um, as, as any part of the European Union. Um, however, there is, there is a good side to that. And the growth that the leadership of people like Louise um, and others brought about has meant that Merseyside um, is now much more like an emerging economy. Um, all of the problems that exist economically in London, the, the lack of space, the terrible housing crisis um, in London, um, the way the, the, the shortage um, of skilled people, all of those problems are very, very different looked at from a Merseyside point of view. We have space. We have a lot of derelict buildings, yes, that need investment, yes. But the opportunity to recapture that space and reuse it is there. Um, we have lots of people um, who want to stay in Merseyside to work because the quality of life is good. They're not, um, they're not as, you know, people moving to London for potentially uh, a lower quality of life, but, but the opportunity um, for income that exists. We have, the, we have the opposite problem. So we have all of those attributes of an emerging um, economy. And I suppose the point that I would want to leave you with is that in Merseyside, we're not the only place like that in England. There's quite a number, particularly in the Northeast, there's quite a number of what you might describe as emerging economies. And the opportunity there is that, what does everybody know about emerging economies? They're a really good bet. You should get behind them because the potential for high growth is there. And second point, that means we need a different kind of economic policy making than we have traditionally seen from the UK government. Um, we need um, policy making levers that will allow us to use planning and investment and um, skills policy to really develop our economy and maximize the opportunities for that, for that growth. Now, this is where you get, to, uh, you get to a slight challenge in the sense that we've got two competing forces because if we want those economic policy levers, then we absolutely need the kind of devolution that we've got with the combined authority and more to take on um, that role of driving forward uh, economic policy making. However, if we equally want the UK to be a more equal place, to have a more balanced economy, we need the capacity of the UK Treasury and the redistributive force of the UK Treasury um, to give people a base level of um, income and to maintain the institutions like the NHS and other things that um, help, help drive against the otherwise inequality that we might see. So we basically need like an optimal level of policy making powers to be devolved, enough to give us the power to do the things to maximize the growth potential consistent with necessary powers of redistribution that serve the vision that we have for a more equal country. And there's a lot more to be said about that. And people will have, you know, I would encourage people to argue with me, you know, we, there's a lot more to be said about that, but I'll leave it there because otherwise Mary, I'll be here all night. Um, but I just want to finish by, by sort of saying, why does this matter? And I mentioned like the reason why I became um, a member of parliament was to make sure that next generation of kids didn't uh, feel they had to leave Merseyside for, for opportunity in life. Um, and that's, that's definitely true. But I think we know that um, there's, there's different kinds of inequality within England. And um, it's not just the inequality between regions that is problematic. It's also um, the ability to rebalance within regions. So we need to tackle poverty and inequality within our regions as well as between it. So I think we have to conceive of our federalism as having that purpose, that kind of um, as creating a new way of running the United Kingdom so that we can have um, all of the power and, and policy making capacity that we need to in, tackle inequality within regions at the same time as between regions. And that I think really should be our purpose because we know in general, more equal countries tend to be more successful. They tend to be uh, healthier, happ happier, and more economically successful countries in the long run. So I think if you do, if you go not for federalism as a point of constitutional nicety, but federalism with real purpose and consistent with the values that we have and that the way that we want our country to be, then I think that the public will come with us. Um, we, of course, of course, I think, 
identity politics. Um, I'm never quite sure what people mean when they say identity politics, right? Because like all politics is identity politics to a certain extent. Um, and, you know, our values are part of our identity, just like where we were born and our gender and our, you know, all of the other aspects about us. Um, it always feels to me like a slightly dismissive way of saying, you know, you're talking about the wrong things in some way. But I would, I would just say this, that if, if nationalism and the kind of damage of alienating others is the problem, and that was the problem with the, those who argued for Brexit, and I think it's the problem with nationalism, I think there's a different way of looking at it, which is to be really clear about the way in which we think changing the UK could truly be of service to the British public and the kind of aspirations that they have for the way that we should run our country and for the country we want to live in. And I think that is a much more persuasive way to bring about lasting constitutional change.